Hello and welcome to What The Math. In today's video of Universe Sandbox 2, we're going to try to terraform Venus. This is the last attempt, or no, sorry, the last planet we haven't terraformed yet. We've terraformed Mercury, we've terraformed Mars, and now it's time for Venus. So, what is the problem with this beautiful orange planet? Well, if you ever uh, read about the Soviet missions to Mars, you'll find out that as soon as something lands on Venus, it basically melts and disintegrates because the atmosphere on Venus is very acidic, very thick, very hot, and it's basically 431 degrees Celsius there right now. And it's also very, very, very highly pressurized. So basically, it is has too much atmosphere and it's too hot. If we look at it very closely, we'll find out that it's actually has a, it has a greenhouse effect of 519 Kelvin, basically 519 degrees greenhouse effect. That's ri ridiculously high. If we uh, actually zoom out and look at its orbit, we will find out that it's located right between... No, sorry, Earth is located right between Venus and Mars. Now, we found out in the previous video that Mars has too little greenhouse effect, and Venus has too much greenhouse effect, and it just so happens that Earth is right in the middle and has just the perfect amount of greenhouse gas. At least for now, until we... Uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, start releasing more and turn this into Venus. But basically, this could be the future of Earth. Uh, anyway, so let's uh, work on this planet. So, um, we do have certain bacteria that can actually bind uh, carbon dioxide to minerals and can essentially create mineral out of gas. And we also have certain technologies, for example, nanotechnology that can even accelerate this and create uh, this material, this mineral out of carbon dioxide gas really, really, really fast. Now imagine we, we launch this uh, in like massive amounts of uh, bacteria and also that nanotechnology stuff and land it and explode it in the atmosphere on Venus and basically try to release it in the atmosphere. Now, if they can survive the super hot atmosphere and land on the surface and start um, creating this um, mineral, then we can probably uh, decrease the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, thus decreasing the atmospheric pressure and thus turning this planet a little bit more habitable. Now, unfortunately, it's still too hot, so what do we do about the heat? Well, we've done this before, we can actually decrease the albedo. If we turn this planet a little bit more reflective, we may be able to decrease the temperature just a little bit um, and create the, uh, the atmosphere needed for the, for the bacteria to survive in it. So let's try that. And if we look here, oh, oh, it just so happens that the albedo is already really, really high. It's actually 90%. And that's because the, the top of the uh, atmosphere uh, on Venus is actually just clouds, so most of the light reflects back into the space. So that's not gonna work. Well, let's just imagine that this is uh, near or possibly far future where we've invented special nano nanomachines that are able to survive superheated uh, atmospheric pressure of Venus. And then we launch them on Venus and start um, binding carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and decrease the atmospheric pressure by about tenfold. So this is now going to be 19. Let's find out what's gonna happen. Look at that, greenhouse effect suddenly dropped dramatically to 239 degrees. And this means that the temperature on Venus will start decreasing dramatically. Look at that, it's dropping dramatically. It is now under 300 degrees and uh, we can now actually um, possibly even start sending that uh, super awesome bacteria that I was talking about earlier. Now let's decrease this a little bit more, let's maybe uh, decrease it to 1 times 10 to the power of 19. Oh no, that's a little bit too low. Okay, so we've decreased uh, atmospheric pressure just a little bit more. And let's see how low the temperature will go from here. So this is basically atmosphere filled with mostly carbon dioxide. There's really very little oxygen on it. And for the most part, other than that, it's really Earth-like. Um, it does have iron, it has a lot of silicates on it. And unfortunately, just no water. So this is the only uh, material we're lacking on it right now. We don't have any water. But the temperature is getting a little bit nicer. It's still a little bit too hot for us, but let's see how well it can go after a few years. And having decreased the atmosphere just a little bit more, we have now achieved sub-boiling temperatures. We can now start introducing that super awesome bacteria from the future that was genetically modified to not only create uh, mineral out of CO2, but also create, create water out of C uh, CO2 and hydrogen that's ca that can be found in this... Um, 
on Venus as well. So we're now launching our, we're gonna launch our super awesome bacteria and this will essentially start creating water. So we're gonna start adding just a little bit of water on the planet using dispenser. And let's just uh, start creating our first droplets of water. This will obviously create first clouds or uh, clouds on the uh, on the surface of Venus. And this is um, atmospheric water that's still kind of circling around. There's not enough uh, liquid water, unfortunately, because um, we don't really have enough bacteria on it. But this is when we're going to start introducing plants and other things onto the planet that will eventually start creating a more balanced atmosphere and more balanced um, environment. So just a little bit more water, and we have our first lakes, first uh, ponds right there, and a little bit more water, and just a little bit more. And now bacteria is doing a lot of crazy work for us, and we can start introducing even more um, uh, plant life and various bacteria that will start creating an atmosphere similar to the one on Earth. Now, as we add water, what's going to happen is that the albedo will actually decrease to something more similar to Earth, and this will most likely go down to about 40. Uh, so we're going to take this down to 40 and just see what happens. And as you can see, the greenhouse effect actually increased again, and this means that the planet will start going toward boiling temperatures again. So this is where we have to introduce more of our super plants and start decreasing the atmospheric pressure again. I'm going to decrease this to about about four, maybe. Uh, yeah, four. I think four is about uh, four is enough. Four times ten to the power um, of eighteen atmospheric pressure and lots of lakes, lots of rivers on Venus. It's not really green yet because this game doesn't simulate um, life, but we do have water, we have clouds, and this is almost close to perfect. Still a little bit too hot actually, which means that we might want to decrease this even more. Uh, mostly because of the albedo effect, we're now warming up a little bit too fast. This is going to be two, I think. No, actually, it should, should be three. Three is better. Uh, and let's see how low this will go. No, that's still actually pretty high. So uh, I think two times ten uh, to the power of 18 is a little bit better. This will decrease our temperature just enough for us to possibly start sending animal life. And possibly even first people. But right now it's still a little bit above um, sauna temperatures, it's still a little bit too hot, this is 76 degrees Celsius, that's basically like a really, 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 really hot day in the desert somewhere, even more so. And there we have it, 30 degrees temperature, just a little bit warmer than on Earth and on average, but overall looks very beautiful, very Terra-like. So terraforming is almost complete. Now, one thing about Venus is that the one day on Venus is actually very, very, very long. So the side that's exposed to the sun is going to be relatively hot compared to the side that's exposed to the darkness. So here, uh, surviving on, on Venus will still require some pretty advanced um, housing because you will be exposed to some really crazy sunlight for, for days straight and this will actually heat up the surface quite a lot as well. So even though the average temperature is only 29 to 30 degrees, uh, the differences in temperature between this area and that area is quite, quite big. The other interesting thing about Venus is that even though our greenhouse effect is only 10 degrees, we're still able to maintain a really, really good temperature. So in other words, Venus doesn't even need greenhouse effect to have temperature that is uh, somewhat survivable for humans. So even without greenhouse effect on Venus, we would be able to survive just fine because it's close enough to the sun and its size is big enough and its albedo is dark, uh, dark enough or low enough that it will still uh, maintain relatively nice temperature for us. Um, so really all we need to do to make Venus more habitable is to try to get rid of that thick atmosphere, try to get rid of that CO2 that's everywhere on Venus and introduce a little bit of water. Now before we finish, let's smack it something into this planet to make it even more beautiful and hot and super unsurvivable. I think this time I'm going to go for something a little bit bigger and I'm going to smack Earth into it. I'm going to smack Earth from this side and ba-boom! Oh no. Oh no. Oh, what happened? My Venus! No, I've destroyed Venus, I think. I think I've destroyed Venus. I think the Venus is gone. It became Earth. And there, it's actually right there, there's two Earths now. Oops. Uh, well, that didn't really work out as I planned, but as you can see, Earth here 
is super, super uh, heavy or massive. It's actually, it's Venus plus Earth. I'm not sure what exactly happened here. I think the game bugged out a little bit, but it basically added them up together. So now there's Venus plus Earth, except this is a really massive Earth. So we are going to do the opposite. We're going to smack Venus into it. There we go. We deserve that Earth. That's for destroying my Venus. And now we have a super massive Earth. And a little, it's not actually as hot as I thought it would be. So let's see what happens to it after a few years. Well, interestingly, even after a few years, this Earth is still super hot. And that's mostly because, because of its size. Uh, it, it's actually a lot bigger than, than um, both Venus and Earth together. Uh, because this is like 2.63 Earths together and because of that it can absorb a lot more sun and so it's actually a lot hotter because of that. So to make this back into a habitable planet I would have to increase its albedo dramatically and thus wait a little bit longer until it can actually cool down a little. Okay so the collision situation did not work out as I planned so the super massive earth is still super hot and but you can actually see some uh, some of the outlines from the continents on it but basically this is what a barren earth would look like uh, if something horrible would happen to our water and it would uh, basically evaporate and disappear forever and ever this is what it would kind of look like you would have nothing on it and it would be super super hot and super dark and it would probably stay this way because the albedo here would probably would probably be pretty pretty low so um, it would keep absorbing sun um, sunlight and stay hot forever and ever Anyway, thank you for watching, please subscribe, this has been Universe Sandbox 2, and we've just terraformed Venus, but then made a small mistake when trying to collapse it with Earth, but that's okay, Venus was actually successfully terraformed. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, bye bye, and good luck to you.